I've been making, uh, you know, sculptures and paintings for uh, for for a long time now, and um, uh, the technical process behind a lot of them uh, became really shop heavy uh, um, and uh, more sort of technologically complex. Uh, like I'd be designing a lot of things on Illustrator and things like that, and uh, I had really missed this. Uh, practice of just um, making spontaneous drawings that weren't necessarily really heavily um, pre-planned out. Um, so I shifted my practice into um, doing more drawings. I mean, I still have lots of sculptures and paintings that I want to do that are sort of in the sketchbooks, you know, waiting to, uh, waiting to come out. Um, another thing that drives my work uh, and in fact, forms a sort of a, um, a connective thread through all of it is just my interest in books and reading and literature. And uh, you know, I'm always reading something. And uh, I suppose it was sort of inevitable that uh, what I read would start um, sort of giving form in some way or affecting or influencing uh, 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 my art. So that that's always there. That's always something that's... Uh, uh, giving giving shape or, or form to to what I'm doing in the, in, in the studio. I'm mostly just making drawings right now, uh, small scale drawings um, that, that are all uh, sized according to the the dimensions of like a, a standard uh, trade paperback, uh, um, and. Uh, I take the titles from uh, books that I read, and I try and have this rule for myself that every time I read a book, I make a drawing and use the title of the book as a title of the drawing. The way I make the drawings, uh, they're not observational. Like I'm not uh, looking at something and making marks based on anything visual. It's uh, more through just sort of improvisational or spontaneous mark making, or sometimes I'll. Um, I'll go like take a rubbing off of a, a wall or something, or the floor, or um, or I'll cut up an old drawing and and use those fragments as a collage, and I work really intuitively with it. I'm just sort of following my nose as I, as I make the as I make the drawing. Uh, I'm just arranging things formally. Um, the uh, the look of the drawing will be. Um, influenced by the title in some senses like if i'm uh i'm using a title like the badlands or a blood meridian i won't really use like bright happy colors for it i'll use more like somber colors somehow so it's sort of related to the tone of the title in a way uh it is not necessarily um uh an illustration of anything that's happening in the book um, and the drawings are really largely uh, non-representational, they're abstract. Uh, so like if I have a title that's like The Lemon, <laughs> I, won't, uh, I won't use an actual lemon. I might use something yellow, but uh, not a picture or something. You know, like a lot of people, I love Blood Meridian, and I've, I've read that book over and over and over again, but I haven't used it for a title yet. Uh, somehow it seems too high stakes to me. I don't want to commit it just yet. <laughs> uh, the plans that I have for larger or more technically complicated work is similar to uh, work that I've done in the past. I've had these a series of works that I've done, one of which is called Reader's Tomb, and uh, all of the work for that is like red. <laughs> I tend to make a, a series of works uh, that all have are all monochrome or relatively monochrome. And for those bodies of work, you know, I need to uh, use, um, uh, auto, uh, you know, employ automotive painters and, and get work done at foundries and things like that. And uh, I look forward to, uh, you know, f continuing some of those series. Like, like, I'll work on a series and I'll never quite, like, feel like it's done. I'll always feel like, oh, I could make more of those pieces. And I look forward to that. They all have this sort of uh, flat, uninflected use use of color. There isn't a lot of like uh, uh, evidence of the artist's hand in them necessarily. They're very sort of crisp and precise. Um, like the artists who uh, I think about uh, when I'm making that work are uh, artists like John McCracken, who um, had. Uh, these sort of smooth, uninflected, just beautiful surfaces. And I really just respond to those formally. 
those look really beautiful to me. And I, uh, I think about those when I'm making my work. When I moved back to Eugene, um, I grew up here, but uh, we moved when I was really young. And um, I lived in uh, Los Angeles for a number of years. And uh, when I moved back to Eugene, you know, I was really uh, sort of, um, <laughs> I, I didn't know what kind of uh, artistic community I was going to be part of. And, uh, you know, I found a community here in Eugene um, at the University of Oregon where, where I teach uh, with, my, with, my, uh, with my colleagues there who are all really outstanding. They're amazing artists. So I feel a lot of support and camaraderie with them. Uh, but Portland also became uh, a place for me where I found a real community, first through uh, Rock's Box you know, with uh, Patrick Rock. And he introduced me to Janine Jablonski. And I felt a really strong connection to artists up there and the art world there, uh, sort of through them. And through them, I met a lot of people. Ditch Projects uh, is an artist-run space that uh, I was uh, part of, I was invited to be part of it uh, when it first started up. Um, uh, and it was started by graduate students, uh, so some of my students, and they asked uh, me to be a member. And uh, that was a really great experience. I really loved being part of Ditch Projects. Uh, I got too busy once, uh, once I had a kid to really be uh, as devoted to it as, uh, as I had once been. But that became a real, um, a really great community for me to be to be part of, uh, and um, uh, Ditch Projects had a good relationship with uh, Patrick Rock of uh, Rock's Box Fine Art, and uh, he would show with us, and our members would show with him, and uh, that also just strengthened this uh, not only my my connection to Portland, but uh, uh, created a lot of um, uh, of relationships between. Um, and it still does this between artists working in Eugene and artists working in Portland. And it's a great sort of conduit back and forth between the two places. It had always been sort of a bubbling around in the back of my head uh, uh, to, uh, number one, just to scale down. You know, instead of making all these medium-sized sculptures and medium-sized paintings, uh, that very often would need... Um, like technical assistance, like I need fabricators to help me do uh, certain things that I couldn't do or just didn't want to do. And it was becoming more and more elaborate. And uh, I'm, I haven't like uh, sworn off that, that, that way of making work, but the pandemic uh, um, sort of allowed me to segue into uh, scaling down the practice into doing more drawings, which I had always wanted to do. It had always been, like I said, sort of, sort of bubbling around in the back of my head, like, oh, I would really like to just, I would really just enjoy just doing more drawings. And uh, so the, the pandemic actually just allowed me to do that. And, uh, and I'm continuing to do it.